Several people have asked for me to do a video on all of the upgrades, modifications, hacks that I've done on the van, which is a great idea. So today I'm going to do the ones on the outside of the van, and next week I'll do all the inside uh, changes that we've made. But first I want to preempt a question or a comment that I'm sure I'll get, which is, you paid so much for this rig, don't you think you should have gone the custom route? My short answer is no, uh, and the longer answer is that this is our first van. Um, we really, you know, when you have your first rig, you really don't know what you want. And even if you do think you know what you want, you're bound to make changes, just like when you buy a house. Uh, you immediately move in and you start you know, moving things and redecorating and even sometimes calling in construction crews. Uh, so that's really what it's like with the van. And uh, everyone has uh, different ways of travel and what their interests are. And so um, it's actually kind of part of the fun. So I think we made the right choice when we purchased this rig. And now we've been able to adapt it to our needs. Have we bought things that we really didn't need? Yes, we have. We've made mistakes. But that's why I'm sharing them, because I don't want you to make the same mistakes that we've made. And also, just to give you an idea of what your options are, and uh, some of these things, obviously, you won't need. So let's start with the most obvious one, which is in the back, and it's what I get the most questions about. We have a Pleasure Way Ascent. We purchased three, almost three years ago. It's a 2018 model on a 2016 chassis. It's a December 2016. So something you need to be aware of when you're buying new rigs that is likely going to be on the year previous chassis. I have like two pages here. And I'm going to try to give you the prices uh, of each item and also links when I have them or there will be in my Amazon store. So. The first thing is the Wilco swing hitch. And it's the first thing, I think was the first major upgrade that we made. And John is the one that purchased it. I don't even think he consulted me on it. And that kind of drove a lot of the other decisions. Uh, at the time, I'm not sure we knew about the Illumines uh, system, which actually has, it requires you to replace the bumper on the vehicle and it's really expensive. Um, but we paid $450 for our hitch and they are now up to $680 but it will tow 5,000 pounds and it will hold two 80 pound bicycles electric bikes now we did not start with the um, the bike rack we have now we started with a, a let's go arrow because we did not have electric bikes and we really weren't considering them at the time so the reason we went with the Hollywood rack, well, for one, it's recommended by RAD, which is the manufacturer of our e-bikes. And the other racks, so there's a, one called a Kuat that swings away from the vehicle, but it doesn't hold as much weight as, uh, as the Wilco swing hitch does. And so that's why we chose the, um, that's why we chose the Hollywood rack. <laughs> Uh, now, Hollywood now allows you to choose between the, the fat tired uh, holders that they go in, but when we bought it, we had to order those separately, but now you can actually get those and that's included in the price. One of the things we thought we needed early on was a box to hold extra stuff because we, th we thought we might want to have extra stuff with us. Well, as we have traveled more and more, we keep taking stuff out of the van and not actually needing more storage. So we had originally purchased a, a DZ box and that hooks into the, uh, the Wilco swing hitch, it's a two hitch, hitch receiver, and that works really well. Um, it's great for like hauling firewood or, you know, large items. I don't know if you had an extra generator, I guess. Um, but um, we actually found that we didn't really need it. So now we use it in the garage to store all of our excess RV stuff that we haven't needed so much. Um, so that was the box. And then we decided we, for our trip to Alaska, we really wanted a spare tire. And that was before we learned about the spare tire holder. Um, and so what we bought was a Kurt tire holder, which hung in the Wilco swing hitch. 
and uh, that allowed us to take an extra spare tire with us to Alaska because these rigs do not come with spare tires. So after we got back from Alaska, we learned about the this swing away uh, tire, and and then what really uh, sold us on it was the fact that we could st we still had room to put our bicycles on the bike rack, as well as enough room to have the spare tire. So uh, that was then we decided uh, we would look into it. I know there's one made by Owl, and this one is an, one made by Agile Off-Road. So uh, we went the Agile route because they are located closer to us. They're in San Diego, and uh, uh, so that was an easy decision to make. Now let's talk about the stuff that we added in the garage. Our van came with a, uh, actually our dealer, which is Beach Cities RV, they included uh, a hose, uh, you know, a, a drinking water hose in the van. Um, I don't, uh, probably other dealers may not do that, but um, I did upgrade that one to the, the uh, Goal Zero because it takes up less room. And so that's the only addition there. Now we also have the, um, the, the jack that we purchased from Agile. It's the Agile Scissor Jack with the frame adapter, and that was $340. We added a surge protector, but this is not the original one we bought. Right. So the original one we bought is kind of, it, it can test the, the pedestal, but it really does not protect all of your electronic components in the vehicle. This is a EMT style. An electronic uh, management system and it's much more expensive so this one's like two hundred dollars and the other one is probably around a uh, hundred dollars so uh, this is the one we should have gotten in the first place okay. this is a tire deflator and so we carry that we have not actually deflated our tires yet but when we do get back out on the road and get on dirt roads we will be doing that to give us a, a better ride and then these are the air hoses for the compressor. Before we went to Alaska, one of our viewers was telling us a story. Uh, he has the same model and year of our rig. Um, that was Doug Tucker, and he had gotten a flat tire on a, in a, in a kind of a dangerous location, I think a mountain pass anyway, and that, that really encouraged us to get a, 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 a plug kit for the tire. Now, his, in his flat, he wasn't actually able to plug it because it was a sidewall. Um, leak, but we thought before we go to Alaska, we should have a, a, this kit. And then we also upgraded our tire pressure gauge with uh, this model. This one's made by Rhino. Now we usually carry one set of those kind of Lego blocks. Our first set was by Campco, and actually uh, I tried out the Valterra. I don't really think there's any difference in quality between the two, but it's nice to have two sets because uh, we don't carry two, but at home it's nice to have two because our driveway is rather at a sharp angle. Because someone's gonna ask me, I wanna mention that this is a child's hammock and we use it to store uh, pillows and jackets and things like that. There's probably six to eight inches of extra space here between the door and the back of the seat, and we use that to take advantage of that extra space. When we travel, we also travel with the trasheroo on the back of the spare tire, and it holds all of our soft things, our bicycle helmets, and uh, kind of bulky items in the vehicle. It really takes the place of the DZ box that we had. And we've also covered the tire with an inexpensive tire cover. When we travel with the e-bikes, we do take a bicycle cover, an inexpensive cover. We don't drive with it because it just, you know, whips against the everything. So we use it at night when it's um, when we expect rain or when the bikes are off of the vehicle and we want to cover them at night. We don't worry so much about the bikes getting wet when we're driving. The wind will pretty much dry them out. And as Rad has mentioned to John, these things are for, I mean, they, the company's located in Seattle where they get lots of moisture and they haven't had a real big issue with, um, with water getting in their components. We've made a few uh, upgrades in the windows. And the first one is the tinted um, front area. 
it's uh, it's actually technically illegal to tint your windows, but this is a clear tint that still knocks out like 90% of the UV, and that is really important in these front cabs because there's so much glass, and especially on the windshield. Um, so we first did the two side windows, and we couldn't do the front because we had a small chip in the glass. Your glass has to be pretty much brand new. And so after the second, this is actually our third windshield, and after the third windshield, we decided we would have it done. We wanted to wait until after Alaska because we figured we would need to replace our windshield after Alaska, and that was true. The second, uh, the second thing we've done uh, for mosquitoes was by the Skeeter Beaters. Now, we haven't used them a lot, but uh, we will occasionally when it's really warm out. Wow, we've had so little air traffic these days. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, so uh, we'll use the Skeeter Beaters occasionally. I'm guessing they're not flying full. No, they're not full. And then I also made, and this is a project you can do for free if you can get, your, get, a, hand, get a hold of some feed bags. I turned feed bags into a cover for the windshield, but I have ordered fabric from Sailrite and I'm going to be making a new windshield side window covering. And so that'll be a project for a future video. <laughs> you have to be really high and tall to do that. Okay. But there's no pogo stick. Are you going? I'm going. On our second trip to Agile, we decided to add an air compressor. And this will allow us to inflate and deflate our tires and uh, maybe give our rides on dirt roads even better than it is with the, with the, with the rip kit. Um, and the, there are two outlets for it. There's one here in the front, and then there's another one around the back. They place these in the Sprinter vans where there's a spot for a spare battery for the chassis. And obviously they don't come with that extra battery. And so they utilize that space. But one thing we do carry with us is a car, um, a car battery. Well, it's a little tiny car starter battery. I think it's 18,000 milliamps. Uh, and uh, we carry that with us. It can start a car uh, and it can uh, start, I mean, you know, a diesel, gas or diesel and it can charge your devices, and it's really nice to have that extra battery. Um, so I highly recommend that. I also want to mention that every 10,000 miles we have the oil changed, and I send the oil to uh, Blackstone Labs for an oil analysis. If you have followed us for any length of time, you know the issues we've had with our, our three-way refrigerator. And one of the things I tried to do to help it was install one of those exhaust fans that goes up here. And we just this last weekend removed it because I really didn't find that it helped. And uh, we are now hopefully going to be replacing the three-way with a compressor fridge so it won't be needed. So one of the other improvements we did was add a cell booster the Wilson cell booster, and we, uh, well, actually, should say I wired it through the top of the refrigerator the, behind here, and then I taped it and, and put the antenna up on top of the roof. However, after, much later, we purchased the, um, the Verizon MiFi jet pack, and that comes with a little portal for an antenna that has done much more than the, the Boost ever did. So I suppose there are places where the WeBoost might help you, but for the money, uh, we think that the MiFi, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a 15 gigs per month. Um, the pack itself is a couple hundred bucks, but I need that extra amount of, uh, of data as well as the range it gives us because I'm uploading videos. So the reality is you may, need, you may not need either of these things, but we have found the MiFi much more helpful than the WeBoost. As far as the outside, I've upgraded the outside shower with a, a nicer shower head. Unfortunately, the company that made the model that I used outside they discontinued that model, which is really too bad. I loved it because you, it just, you turned the water on and off just by bending the head. They replaced it with one that was round, and I just looked this morning on Amazon, and that one is un currently unavailable.
Maybe it's just out of stock. Maybe it'll be back, but you know, we'll see. One of our viewers said that he read online that someone had an issue with their propane not working and finally was able to figure out he had a he had replaced his uh, shower head in here like we did. Let me show you. He put um, a new shower head in like we did that has the metal hose, and he figured out that that hose, which you you know you shove it back into this area here, and it must have somehow shorted out this connector here. And so he put some heat shrink, or I'm just going to put some black electrician's tape around there because that's all I have. Anyway, and uh, that should keep that from uh, touching those two and shorting it out. The very first video I did for my channel was about my outdoor shower, and it is so funny that it is the most watched video. Uh, I have actually updated it since then, and I showed that in my, uh, in, when we were traveling to Florida this past fall. Was that fall? No, it was winter. <laughs> That's right, it was January, February. Anyway, I updated that, but a lot of people didn't see it because it was in part of our travel journey. So what I did was I got uh, better suction cups and I expanded the size of the opening um, a little bit and it's much more comfortable. And so I will, uh, I will include the link to, the, um, to that video or the updated video so that you can see that. One of the other things that our dealer did for us when we took ownership was he also gave us a better hose. Uh, I don't know what comes with the thing originally, but he gave us a better hose for, the, for dumping your tanks. And uh, we also always carry extra caps because we've lost two caps. I don't know how they possibly fall off, but we've lost a couple of caps. So we do that as well. And we have uh, purchased a couple of uh, things to clean out our tanks. One is a Rhino, I don't know, master blaster. Um, that probably should be done after every trip. And then the other thing is a swivel stick that you stick in the tanks and uh, try to keep things cleaned out. And uh, we should also do that after every trip. Um, but uh, we, will, we are definitely being better about it since we had these professionally cleaned out when we were at the R Village rally in Florida. Probably the biggest thing we've done to the van is add the Agile Off-Road Rip Kit Ride Improvement Package. It adds about three and a half inches of lift to the back and two and a half inches to the front. Although that's just a secondary thing, what it really does is it replaces the, the one leaf spring that comes with these vans with like seven and really improves your ride and it was great in Alaska. In fact, I don't think we would have done the Kennecott Mine um, trip if we didn't have that lift kit or that uh, suspension upgrade. And then along with that we added all-terrain tires and these are the BF Goodrich tires. Very popular, the KO2s. And instead of just getting four, we obviously got a fifth one to act as our spare. And we have been really happy with both the tires and the lift. I'm exhausted thinking about all the changes we've made to the outside of the vehicle. Next week's probably is going to be even longer, but um, it seems like a lot, although I hope some of this helps you either not do things or do things a little differently. A lot of these things you wouldn't get on whether, even if you had a custom vehicle made, you probably wouldn't have thought of these things or had recognized that they were important. Um, so whatever you get, make sure it meets your needs, not someone else's recommendations and do your own research and, uh, and enjoy the process of adapting this to suit you. So that's it for this week and next week we'll have all the inside changes. Thanks for watching.